is trying to understand how the taxpayers spend in rural is understood, and particularly in Birkenhead. And here are some of the actual uh, results of it. There will be a whole series of, of work to follow on this. And Phil, do you want to say something about the new chief executive's response to this sort of approach? Yeah, I mean, I think um, Eric, Eric Robinson is, is very much supportive of making sure that we, you know, we target our resources, partly because of the, um, the, the, the cuts we're having to do um, on, um, on the, based on need, um, and, and not just simply roll things on you, you on you. I think it's an approach he's he uses his former authority, uh, Staffordshire, and, and I think he's very keen and very receptive to, um, to this approach, not just um, on, on anti-social behaviour, and not just on in Birkenhead, but across the borough, because there's no question we will have to be much more targeted about how we spend money going forward. So I think Eric is, is uh, definitely keen to, to roll this approach out more generally in, in, across the council's budget, other budgets. Very good. I think well, it would be nice also to invite him to come and see how we are the future as well as our new boss. And um, we are trying to be outcome focused, which he's publicly said he wants an approach to our council. So it could be a learning process both of these facts. Can we move on? Um, Joe, can you start taking us through the report that I think comes up from page seven of the agenda? The constituency Monday's report, uh, section 2 on page 7, runs through the 2014 um, and 15 projects and gives an update on each one. I won't go through them all individually because they're asking the committee to note progress. Uh, but I'm just going to draw attention to a couple of items. The first one being um, the town tour because um, we had quite a lot of discussion about it at the last meeting and um, some positive and negative comments. Um, since then, we've met with um, some of the councillors to understand better their comments and also go to LCT and the editorial group to feedback about those comments and try and find a way forward. Um, so we're asking the committee to um, allow the editorial group to progress the next edition of Town Talk, um, but we want them to take on board um, some of the feedback around sustainability of the newsletter. So we want to make sure that the newsletter is going to run after the funding ends and we'll looking at uh, different partners contributing and sponsoring the newsletter. So we want, could we say, well, Joe's on page eight and there are recommendations here for a reason. And uh, there's two, to progress the next edition um, and to approve the editorial um, group and therefore the content. Now there was real division the last time about whether we should proceed, whether this was a worthwhile project. Um, so the decision we have to make is whether we do proceed, and secondly, is it dependent on getting some outside funding? Because um, the private sector thinks it's worth backing this project because they think it's going to be great. But I was going to ask last time about the mechanism distribution because I was a bit concerned at how I saw it being distributed in Dr. Ferry. So there's two things. One is whether we're going to get people who want to put their money in it, because I think it's people who are actually going to read the publication. But secondly, 
Uh, is the meeting happy that we go for one further edition and then have another look at it? Or not? Yeah, one. One more. One more. All right. So one more. 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 One <laughs> I'm sure these points bear in mind. So that's great. Very good. Um, next point, Joe, please. Uh, I want to talk about uh, number two, which is the Rock Spot project that is being run by LCT. And we've got an appendix two, which goes into some detail about the, um, the work that's been done so far and the work that's there's still to do. But I just want to highlight that um, it hasn't been brought to my attention that the before and after photos aren't actually the same site. So we're going to look into that and we'll recirculate the report with the right pictures um, because they don't correspond to the, um, the report sites. Yeah, the photos. So are there two things here, Joe? One is that the photographs, some of them are wrong. Yeah. So we haven't walked, we haven't ushered in the promised land in all the areas that we're at, but some action has taken place. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the action has taken place, but somehow the photos are Could, you, could I also ask people to communicate um, either with Joe or with me that when they go home, I'm going to have the joy of going home tonight for the first time in years and not see the corner of Grange Road West, yeah. sorry, yeah. Rock Lane West and yeah. Newchester Road, an unbelievable icing. Now, I, during the election, I reported every rock spot I could see on behalf of the constituents. And I know some of the councillors did as well. Um, but if in fact they've not been clear, could we actually hear? Um, because they, they, I think it's wonderful some progress has been made of uh, delivery. Uh, but um, how does the public uh, get in touch with you, please, to well, report God Squads? Um, the, the best way is through the CRM system. It's really important um, that they're reported online, if possible, through the, and noted on the CRM system because then the, the deadlines for them being addressed have to be adhered to and there's triggers from the environmental team when they haven't met the deadlines. All right, and could you do that? And could they be copied to every councillor who are the councillors as well? I'm sorry, but it doesn't work, Jen. Yeah, uh, we are getting that feedback and this is something Do it by the CRM system, whatever that is. But could you also copy it to your councillors so we can actually check that something's actually happening? Yeah. Paul? Fred, I haven't got appendix two. Is this one of the grot spots? Was it um, Paul's Road East, the top yes. of all Yeah. I've been wrong. That's what I was going to say, fantastic. Well, it's down because you did. But we still have it. It's fantastic. We just need to cut the grass now. But it looks so much better. Yeah. Well, we did do a good job. The only thing is, check today, and there are three mattresses up there at the moment. I, no, I, I did. It looks so much better. I, I mean, I have to be honest. Very I, very I actually went to watch this community involvement clearing that spot. Um, as I have a suit on, I didn't pretend I'd done any of it. And I was disappointed to notice two weeks later. But, but the idea is that you just have to keep doing this keep doing to try and change behaviour. But at least there wasn't a fridge on there after. Uh, no mattresses. Joe, let's public health, I think yeah. we can agree, can't we? We can agree that it's uh, just an OB update, so that it's going forward and they've received the first tranche of funding. And um, so the school readiness uh, programme for the school twos is taking place at um, St. Paul's and we'll get an update at the next meeting. All right. The next is voluntary sports plan. Yeah, uh, again, the funds, the projects in the voluntary sector support funds, so just to, to give you an update um, around the Runwell project and um, the breastfeed League project has taken place. So it's just um, an update there and asking the Consumption Committee to note the progress. <coughs> and then the other project <coughs> to draw your attention to is the road safety project in 2.7, which um, in appendix 6, there's a list of drop curves that are going to be funded through the project.
So it's just to get your approval in the team um, that the uh, road safety team can go ahead with putting those got curves in place. And could we get people who are either in wheelchairs or who push people in wheelchairs then to do a check just how well this work's been done? Because some years ago when my mum was still alive, I brought her up in a wheelchair and every time we went through one of these dropped curves, she was nearly thrown out. And it was just a gap between this, the actual drop and the actual uh, roadway. And yeah, I, I really like the feedback. For some of the work that's been done is shoddy. Alright? There must be organisations which we can ask to do that for us. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go through where our team is and find out why they do for us. Next one, Jeff. Just a quick update on Rotten Park Trust. The Esplanade project has played a secret in the They've handed out for their contractor, so that is going ahead imminently. And the signage project um, also commenced in March, and so the signs um, have gone up for that project. The antisocial behaviour funding is going forward to next year, so we'll talk about that in a minute. And the community research project is going ahead, and um, the black and ethnic minority community is going to be the first topic that's um, going to be researched about that community. Andy, can you say something please about um, feeding urban head projects, which this week money is being spent to feed what would be more hungry children otherwise, um, and how we might get ask you to give us a report back on what people say their successes and problems were, so we can then make decisions about the summer of this. Yeah, I can do that. For the city's committee to receive an allocation of your will money, which is basically a mid-dental living money, which is given to the constituency to administrate for them. The other constituency committees basically had quite a wide uh, spectrum of what we could allow applications on, but the, the Birkenhead Committee decided to focus the money on the Birkenhead campaign, uh, especially around. Uh, Activities such as uh, food clubs and breakfast clubs for children and young people, especially in the um, in the school holidays, we might not necessarily be receiving um, adequate, you know, um, food and then uh, when not at school. We we funded eleven applications, um, and a number of them are taking place at the moment. One of them, for example, is uh, an organisation called Manor Kitchen. They they are. Um, working in partnership this week with Will Christian Centre to put on uh, food and breakfast clubs. Uh, we are, uh, we had a lot to spend from the uh, from last year's allocation and we've got another allocation of your money uh, this year to spend. So we're going to obviously go back to the organisations who are delivering the services this week to, uh, to get an evaluation of them, find out how the project went, um, what benefit they brought to the community uh, with a view to setting the criteria for uh, for the other spend and, and this year's allocation of money as well. So that would be great. And that, what we'll try and do is rush this year to get the Whitson so the money went out. But we'll, Andy, what we'll try and do is um, when we get the report back about who's been most successful <coughs> in feeding hungry kids to think about how we spend the next tranche of money. And then it would be really good if we could publish so that people wouldn't, people might take a level interest in what their local church or voluntary body is doing. Actually support them as well. But it would be a way of increasing um, interest and in activities on that front. Are we happy with that um, way forward? Yes, Colin? Chair, I'm Q Langford from the Viking Centre. Uh, I'm disappointed to see that the next round um, is not to be until July, which effectively means that anything which is approved won't be able to impact um, on the school holidays. No, sorry, it will be, it will be, but it won't be spent in July and August. Sorry, that whatever piece of information that's wrong. But we, we do want to learn from what we from this Whitson. Then it will be open. So, in fact, and then the money will go. 
so that people can actually spend it on the next school holidays, which is the summer. Andy. Yeah, um, the, one, the suggestion was that the constituency committee would spend a second allocation of your will and if you like. But as ours is it's going to be based on you know looking for organisations to run activities in the summer holidays, we're not going to follow the same line as the other constituency committees and we are going to try and um, make the money available as soon as possible so organisations can apply in time for summer. So we are hopefully we are going to bring it forward, so it's not going to be July like the other constituency. And, we, and if there are other bodies that think they can provide um, food for young children while they be hungry, we obviously like them, and it wouldn't be to add to put in bids. But one or two bids went astray. Uh, that's life, isn't it? And the, the committee made decisions very quickly, so they got their money in time. One was in Bidston, where their application got lost in the process of getting it to us. And the decision was made almost by, straight away by the committee, and they got the money and they're providing things this week. So it's important now. Um, we are, it's a really important one, but we are hopefully alive to it. Anything else, Joe? Um, the next section is about allocating this year's funding that we talked a little bit about the ASP funding, and um, we set up, we agreed that we set up a task and finish group. We just need to nominate five representatives who are going to be on that task and finish group. Right. Is that five councillors or five? Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Could we have volunteers? There's two, three, four, five. Who have to be five? Any others? We've got the five. It was six with George and Chair. All right. Yes. Fair enough. Thank you, Dave. Great. Chair? Yeah. And um, we just would like to say, can we task them with allocating the funding and using the data analysis that we have so far to help guide how to spend that money and report back to the 24th of September with how that funding is allocated? And could we actually, the, the clear guidelines of the meeting, Joe, um, was we wanted public involvement, particularly those on the receiving end of the social behaviour, how they would suggest we spend the money. And, I mean, given that, there's a point about, Phil's point, about we would like the Birkenhead councillors to take forward in council, but this, this, by tradition, where we just divide everything by four and give it to four constituencies, is not good enough. It ought to be targeted where need is, and also focus on outcomes. That's one general thing. Secondly, is that the public involvement um, to, to actually shape the programme. And we've had some suggestions this evening, which I would like us also to take forward um, from um, constituents about how that budget is spelled. Others I know who have not spoken, who've got very active residence associations. I'm sure they will discuss it in their residence association and come back to one of us, Joe. Need you or councils they know, so that those ideas are raised in the task and finish group. Can I just well, say I took myself off the task and finish group? I thought it was something else, then, so I couldn't get my hands on that task. We've only got five now, which is what we want. That's what we've got. All right. Volunteer for everything. Yes. <laughs> All right. Very well, good. Anything more, Joe? Have we agreed that? Yes, we've agreed that. And okay. then environmental funding is a 20,000 allocation, so 10,000 carried over from the local money from last year that we didn't spend because all the, um, the CRM reports, all the uh, reports of light things was addressed through core budgets. So the 10K wasn't spent and so it's been carried forward to this year. So it's a recommendation to set up an environmental task group and nominate five representatives to look at how to spend the 20K that we've got this year on specific problems based on need and also um, look at the way reporting takes place at the moment and trying to get um, issues addressed more quickly and ensuring that the things are stuck through the net uh, because there's been quite a few problems in the past few weeks. So there's two suggestions there, Joe. The second one doesn't require any money. No. It actually requires the council to look critically at how it delivers. On the first one, given that you know, there's much rejoicing in heaven tonight, in the Laird side project is actually working, clearing sites. 
Can you actually do, do you not want to actually make sure they've got enough money to continue their work? Of doing the hot spots? And do we need to have another committee meeting? Um, are we happy with that? Yeah, fine. All right. Um, and the more sites they can clear, the better. Very good. Anything else, Joe? Um, We've got questions. Um, yes, yeah, sure.
an answer yes or no whether our house is going to be found. What is it? These are the conditions of the living. All right, thanks. Yeah. Do you, so do you want to say something for all of us about, I mean, I, I know the urgency, but not everybody will. Can you just, we have yeah. just a way of agenda of treating us as if we're like second class citizens. Or, no, we at the moment, we, we, we just, we lived in that, in that sort of condition. We lived it. We always lived in that road since 1960. Yeah. And since the houses have been like that, uh, the antisocial behaviour has gone, gone up tenfold. Yeah. All right, I mean, what I'd like to do, and to have them back, so could you make sure everybody in, uh, your, sees what we're talking about? Yeah, well, I think I'd like to be in fact there and then come back. Well, to the these are the yeah. 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 For those who haven't yeah. seen it, I mean, it's all. Yes. I mean, I get into trouble for making these comments, but it is actually, I mean, you do see these in trouble spots of the world, boarded up properties like this. And I, I think it's. I, I totally sympathise with you. So, the, the, who's giving us the answer? So that's all we need. Yes or no answer. If it's a yes answer, we'll be the ticket further. Excuse me. Uh, we've been waiting for you know, two years for an answer on the agenda. We do get letters out. I should say in there the response that we've wrote in this yeah. to us is the same as what we've heard for two years. Now it's unsettling as it says there for us as residents. I mean we've got children, we've got families. We all grew up in that area. The community was such a tight knit community, um, and now it's just completely fell apart. It's been left in this way. Now, not all the houses boards up, as you can see on these pictures. Some are, mm -hmm. some aren't. Um, they're doing, they say they're doing the work, they're not doing all the work, they're doing part of the work. Um, they've said they clean the areas up. Now, that's only recently just been cleaned up. I can also say there was an incident when we had a council of you coming to the area. Now, he sent out, Magenta sent out the scene in force. There was about six to ten people in every street, walking down the street, they go in people's gardens, cleaning the gardens. That was one off. Once you, whoever it was, this severely gone, it left it ruined again. There's no, no one's cleaning anything up. It's bringing out to social behaviour. He say in the report that they've got um, officers to patrol, but them officers aren't there for us. They told us that themselves. They're not there to, to keep us safe. They say it's us raping police, but they're to keep the empty houses from getting broken into. Our children have grown up in that area, and it's disgusting. It's absolutely, as you can see from these photos, it's, it, and the, it's the fact that we are getting nothing, no response back from them, other than what we've heard from past two years. Thank you. So, so could I ask for two actions? One is Denise and Steve are on the agenda. Denise is off now. Oh, is it right? Steve, could you, uh, could you put it on the agenda paper to actually raise this issue? And secondly, could we, with the bits and councillors, could we actually ask um, uh, Brian for a public meeting uh, in the area so residents can come and we can we have the boss on the agenda down there to actually have something out? Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. Steve, that's all we need to do. Um, I mean, you know, obviously, I have declared declared my interest. The, 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 the issues around the Crossways Estate have not happened overnight. The Crossways Estate has had a feasibility problem, has had uh, problems letting properties there over many years. That's it's not only because it, of the agenda. It's not that's just. Not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not. That's not for the residents. Whenever the house came out, it was not, filled with the Frank, you, you're not, you're not, you stop people, ask yes. people not to interrupt you not trying to interrupt yeah. well, all, I'm, all I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of things that have to go in to making the area a, a, a designated renewal area. And without all the, all the pieces being in place, it is very difficult to consult meaningfully until all the things are in place. It is a very difficult situation because the very talk about crossways is it, is it, is it coming down, is it staying up, actually leads to the inevitable that that's something that a course of action might have to be taken. So, but believe you me, it, it, is, it is certainly an issue that I have called for to be handled with sensitivity, involving all the three ward councillors and residents, but we, you can't, we can't set 
hairs running until say, facts are known, and, and that's the difficulty that, 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 that the Magenta board find itself in. They, 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 there, are, there are a number of prop properties that aren't let. It's not a popular area uh, anymore. Maybe it, it was. was in the past. I, 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 I don't 100% know. What I'm saying is that it's got to be ha ha handled with some sensitivity for everyone concerned uh, in the area. I, I have deep concerns myself about, about the area. The long-term plan is to make it people want to live there again. That's a long-term plan. How you achieve that is going to be a, a difficult task. I'm not, I don't think it's right for me as a single board member to, to take this, this issue on. But we, I, I will raise the issue again that people do talk, do come out and talk, but it, it is a, a, a difficult situation. It's, it's not an easy situation to solve. And the problems have been long term over many years. And you can blame, you know, blame Whittle Council before that, who were the landlords, and Magenta since. The, the fact of the matter is that it is not as popular an area as, as it once was. And when you're faced with that situation, a long term solution has to be found. And I promise you, you know, Magenta, as you've heard, are, are responsive, are trying to respond to that situation, but doing it the right way. Uh, and and when, when there is something to say, then I think the gentleman will, 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 will say so. Gentlemen, around here, Yeah, I'd just like to say that, excuse me, we're actually, we went home to the pub, the Boston Road, for the help. And we've lived in Poplar Motor, excuse me, 30 odd years. We own our property. And we have to get an evaluation to us in the pub 12 months ago. And in the evaluation, <coughs> Our house has gone down in value of ten thousand pounds. Because of the in a position I'm not in a position to no, negotiate no, individual no, prices, no, no. nor am I in a position to say well, well, yeah. it's only because uh, yeah. Yeah. the way you've got the house at home. Yeah. You're moving people out and people get the scare money when they're moving because they get the scare well, money by the council. No, no, I'm not gonna come back on that. It's not by the council. Not yeah. by the council. You just said yeah. it's not by the council. Last 10 or 12 years, um, the Gentile Council did all kinds of very big on the hours, new roofs, new windows, metrics. Two years ago, we put all new fences around the yeah. house. So why do you pay off our money? And uh, it's, it's where it is now, it's just a um, baby. Because... Only anti houses, right. top no fences. Can I answer that, friends? So because, because until a, a, a decision or any long-term decision is made about the crossways oh, estate. This is, this is 12 years ago. You, 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 if you don't, you don't actually want to hear an answer, then uh, we can all shout at each other all night. All I'm trying to say is, Magenta have, and the council before, have invested heavily in those properties over a number of years to maintain their sustainability. We are, rather ironically with the crossways, we are at something at a crossroads, but until those decisions are, are made, we, we, we have to do what we can in terms of consultation. And I'm very keen that Magenta con consult properly and fairly. And you've seen from the figures, the last consultation, it's a fairly even split. Half the people seem to be saying, it, it's finished, do, you know, do what you want. And others are saying, there might be some sustainability there. The facts speak for themselves. People are moving out uh, and, are not, and are not applying to go into any of the properties that come there. Now, I'm, I'm not saying there's a deliberate policy that I know of. All I'm saying is that until those decisions are made, it is a really, really difficult situation to deal with. I understand your frustration, anger. I've been exactly this, the same temperament as, as yourselves. But until certain positions are, are known, and now Magenta has to come to, to, to deal with its long-term funding issues, and the Queen's speech will have a dramatic impact on Magenta and all other social landlords in terms of the right to buy situation coming on, on the frame again. So, so the landscape changes by the week, by the day, uh, and, and yesterday uh, the Queen's speech put another um, issue on, on the table. All I'm saying is that Magenta are your landlord, do have a responsibility to you, those who are, are Magenta tenants, and will have a responsibility to those in the area as well, and they will try to do their utmost, but I'm not Gonna, yeah, I'm not able to say one way or the other what decision will be because all, all of the, the positions haven't been consulted. There will be full consultation. 
I think it might be a tad early, Frank, to, to suddenly have a, have, a, have a public meeting. But I will still certainly report back to Magenta that they need to get out on the ground and talk to people. Okay. Very good. And also, George said, George, would you like to say what you would be doing as well? Yeah, in I mean, for, for, in, in support of that. We are in, 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 at present moment in terms of um, Magenta have been to us as the council and basically asking for our support. That was the idea of where were they able to go. We haven't had any uh, categorised things because basically what they're saying is if, 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 the, if the decision was, as the gentleman correctly said, to knock down some properties, they're not all in Magenta's ownership. There's, I think there's 20, 26 properties which are owned, you know, or under the right to buy, have been purchased by somebody else. So it's very, very complicated system. What I would say, from my point of view, in terms of housing, I will ensure that we make that conversation with Magenta happen so that you people get some information back to you as quickly as possible. All right, right. Yeah. 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 I'm going to come back to, sorry, I'll come back to you in a moment. Oh, there are a lot of people wanting to ask questions. Um, let's go round and have questions on Crossways, um, and then we can respond at the end. Yeah. But you, I think you've made your point very successfully. Thanks. I promise you it's not going to be dropped. Steve's talked about he, how he's going to do it. George, well, actually, how he's going to do it. Oh, yeah, he's from and, the council. Thank you. And we also have to face you at these regular meetings, which I'm pleased to do. So it won't go, I promise you it won't go away, but we haven't got something to drop into the conversation which solves what hasn't happened, which you would desire over the last 10 years. Lady Hill. There's a lot of the, um, on every estate you get trouble, but nothing at all like what you're going on about. The Crossways Estate has been a good community estate, and I've lived there for 55 years. Now, I've never known anything like this. The only reason why that estate is empty is because a lot of the people were elderly and the bedroom tax and, you know, people ill health. They all moved out. They all got empty bedrooms and they're getting charged for them. Well, they, have, they don't work, some of them. They can't afford it. And Magenta are just sitting back and doing nothing. I've been in touch with all kinds. I've even been to your to see you a few months ago and the man on the end about the antisocial behaviour. I got a letter back off you from the House of Commons. It's just the same as what Magenta send out all the time. Surely they've got something in the pipeline by now. You can't leave us any longer living with rats, mice, antisocial behaviour. You've put the rent up to £92.50. You can't use the Gilbury units on half of the houses. The road is an absolute mess. I phone up Street Scene nearly every single day because we've got fly tippers at the top of the road. You go up Hovland Road now and there's a bath up there full of tiles that people are coming yeah. up. Last week it was a load of building material. Last year there was over 150 tyres dumped there on the 4th of November. I phoned up and got them moved because the whole of the area could have went up in smoke. You don't realise what it's like I to live on that estate. Well, we, we and it's very, right. very hard. It's very intimidating. Sure. We've got, we, I mean, I hope you, you've grasped two things this evening. One is it's very hard it is. To, to remove any bureaucracy, however well intentioned bureaucracy. But tonight we've actually been capitalising on previous meetings about what we're doing on our social behaviour. We're now going to target the, bu uh, the budgets. We can actually ask people what do you want the budget to actually spend on. So we are trying to actually get. And some you know what they should do as well? They should vet people. Yeah. If they're worthy to live in a good house, yeah. vet them. Yeah. Not, not just stick anybody in because they forgive me for saying it, but they're like gypsies. They're there one minute and gone. Yeah. They don't stay. I've stayed for 55 years. I want to spend the rest of my life there. I love where I was brought up. I'm proud of where I've been brought up. And I'm proud to say I live in the North End. We've got a load of scallies round by us, and they're the ones who are pulling it down. 
It's not always been, I will not have what you've just said. It's always been known for something. No, it has, but not that bad. No, it's not only matter. I didn't say that. No, not that don't, bad. Please, please don't put words into your mouth that I didn't say. I said there have been long-term yeah. problems, yeah, sustainability but, problems yeah. in the crossways. I didn't say why and what the reason is for. And I'm not more familiar with the area. I was born and bred in Upper Brassy Street, as you might know. Uh, lived all my life in the north end of Birkhead. Most of we my don't mates see are from, anybody my, Most of my mates are, are f from that, that neck of the woods, so I'm not some sort of you know, snob know. Who, who's trying to tell you how to live. You. All I'm saying is that whichever decision is made, whether it's a reinvestment in the properties and uh, you know, uh, the spoke tenants going in to those properties, if we can get them to, people to go in there, or, it's the other in, or if it's park clearance or whatever. I don't know what that decision is. And for Magenta to, to actually go out and consult on something, it would have to have made a, 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 a final decision. It would also, whatever option is taken, would have considerable financial consequences to Magenta Living as, a, as, a, as, a, as an organisation. And to say that they haven't done, done anything over, over a number of years, if the, the arguments are contradictory because there has been investments in the property. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. modernisation programmes, there's been fences, and you, you name it. And, and Inevitably, sometimes that investment doesn't do the job. It doesn't attract the right type tenants. It doesn't attract the right environment. And about living in an area, whether it's a private area or, or, or a, a, council, a former council estate, everyone has the right to live in a, in a nice environment. That, that's, that's, that's my interest. No, no, sorry, I'm now going to close this. Lots of you, we've had 35 minutes on this one topic. And I promise you, it's not going to be. We're not going to leave it. There's lots of suggestions which have ramifications on other policies we're trying to pursue. And I promise we will try to pursue those. All right? Well, if you can secure a meeting for yeah. us, that's a start. Very good. At least we're meeting with them. Very good. All right. Number two is Hugh Lang Langford. I bet there's Hugh here. Hugh, come on. Would you, in a sentence, put your question? Yeah, it seems to me there's an increasing problem of adults and teenagers cycling at speed on the footpath. Um, I notice it particularly, obviously, where I'm standing around waiting for buses. Uh, but I'm sure it's a much more widespread problem. Um, the, the reply from the police I find wholly unsatisfactory. Um, they admit it's a crime. They more or less admit they don't do anything about it. Um, unless somebody actually complains about a particular spot. Now, the town's littered with CCTV cameras. If those are ever, if those are ever switched on and monitored, then they'll see the problem. They don't need people to identify a particular problem you, or a particular you spot. register with the police the unsatisfactory nature of their reply, but also to link your, the suggestion we had earlier that the community patrol groups might be going out with police, um, that they might spend more of their time in the areas which are important where this goes on, so they can do something immediately. It's not going to be a... It's not, it's not a silver well, I, I, mean, I will report the particular yes. incidents when they occur. I'll be interested to see whether sure. anything happened. All but right. in the meantime, it would be useful to know how many people were actually prosecuted or given on the spot fines during the last 12 yeah, months. We actually make sure we ask the police that question. All right, so it's